Peace be with you. I am Bruce Wozniak. This is Catholic Sports Radio, located at the intersection of your faith life and sports life, and on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and lots and lots of other platforms. Thanks so much for joining me for this and hopefully many other episodes. The show website is catholicsportsradio.net, which has everything from a built-in player to hear each episode there, links to various podcast platforms where you can listen and subscribe or follow, as some of them call it. Logos to click on to follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, as well as join the Facebook group. Plus, the website has a bio about me and even an area called For Listeners, where you can submit prayer requests. Speaking of the website, I want to clarify, every week on this show, when you hear me say that I don't get any income from doing this, nor do I have any sponsors, don't misunderstand when I talk about Merchantside Marketing Group, the company who built the show website. Don't think that they are paying me to talk about them on the show. That is not the case. But I did have such a great experience with them in terms of the job they did with CatholicSportsRadio.net. And it does mean something that their owner is a strong Christian. So we all know the power of word of mouth when it comes to recommending a business, which is why I would refer you to them if you need a website or have social media needs or related services. Look for their ads on CatholicSportsRadio.net and get in touch with Merchantside Marketing Group to learn about the various services and packages that they offer And, of course, do tell them that you heard about them on this show. Now on to my ministry moment for this episode. Game planning has become so, so intricate in present-day sports. I remember one time reading a fascinating feature story about a Major League Baseball manager that really gave some amazing insight as to the depth of strategy that's actually going on in almost any given baseball game. The more that cameras are allowed in locker rooms, we get glimpses of, say, a NHL coach and both his talk to the players and a look at the whiteboard where they draw up plays. The NFL, my gosh, the quarterbacks have a lingo all their own, and then the coaches on the sideline are covering their mouth with a clipboard to avoid the risk of someone from the opposition looking to see if they can read their lips. But looking to God can eliminate that kind of tension in our faith life. Instead of overcomplicating our life with layers of intricacies, such as these that I'm referring to from the sports world, it's a matter of just looking to our Heavenly Father. In the Old Testament, we read in Isaiah chapter 41, Do not fear, I am with you. Do not be anxious. Or as some translations say, do not anxiously look about you. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. So friends, as much as there is to be learned about game planning and preparing for a sports opponent, let us prepare our hearts by looking up to God for help and strength. Moving on now with this week's episode, my guest is the Director of Football Operations and Special Teams Coordinator for the five-time state champion Royals at Roncalli High School, a co-ed Catholic high school in Indianapolis. He is in his 22nd year at the school and has had seven kickers go on to play collegiately at notable schools, and players under his direction hold 10 team records. Next month, he will be presenting at a football coaches clinic for the seventh time. As a student athlete himself, he had participated in numerous sports, including his college years when he competed at Ball State University in intramural sports. Welcome to Catholic Sports Radio, Chris Strykowski. Hey, Bruce. Thanks for having me. After uh, looking at your uh, list of guys and, and ladies that you've had on it's just humbling to think that I could even be uh, mentioned in the same breath as some of those folks. Absolutely, Chris. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ, and everyone has a story. Everyone has some witness, and I know that the audience is going to benefit from hearing your story, which begins, I know you were raised Catholic, but this is interesting. Your dad was Catholic, but your mother was a convert. So talk about what it was like to grow up in that kind of a household faith-wise. Yeah, it, 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 I find it really interesting that um, a lot of times uh, the, the people that you look at and you see that that, that maybe have the, the strongest of faith haven't always been that way. Um, in this particular case, my dad um, was born Catholic, was raised Catholic, um, you know, went to Catholic schools. Uh, you know, my mom was not. She was uh, she was a product of the public school system in Battle Battle Creek, Michigan. 
Uh, my dad from the north side of uh, Chicago, uh, a little place called Waukegan. And um, as they you know got together and they met and they got married, they decided that okay, it would be a it would be a, a, a wise thing for for our kids to be um, raised in a in a Catholic household. So my mom converted to Catholicism, and um, you know, like with a lot of families, hey, when it came time to you know, uh, you know when were we going to go to church and uh, the things like that, a lot of time it was mom that was kind of a uh, kind of uh, you know steering that ship. Um, and, and interestingly enough, it's even it's even bled over into uh, my you know my own life because. You know, I was born and raised Catholic, um, and, and my wife actually, um, you know, has has been a become a convert to uh, to Catholicism uh-huh. as well. So we've even kind of married mirrored that in our own uh, in our own marriage later in life. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Well, clearly there was a commitment to making sure you came up Catholic, though, as evidenced by the education that you got. Yeah, um, throughout uh, through throughout our grade school years, our high school years. Um, for me personally, um, you know, that, that Catholic element was really, really important. Um, my, uh, you know, my mom and dad, we, uh, we settled in, um, the, what's called the little flower area area in, uh, in Indianapolis. Um, it's surrounding, um, St. Therese, which, uh, Catholic school, which is known as little flower, um, built in the 1920s. It was, it was one of those um, neighborhood parishes. You've got the you've got the school, you've got the church, and then you've got the neighborhood around it that mm-hmm. all kind of centers um, centers on that church. So for us, man, we live you know five blocks away. Uh, you know, we're, we're we're walking to school to and from school every single day. It, and I don't want to sound too old here, but you know, and it didn't matter if it was raining or if it was snowing. And, you know, we'd say, "Hey, mom, you know, why, you know, why don't you give us a ride to school? It's five blocks. You can walk it." <laughs> So you know, having that uh, you know throughout uh, from from kindergarten all through eighth grade was a was a big part of uh, shaping who I was. And then when it was time to go to high school, uh, you know, now we're trying to decide where to go. And I ultimately decided um, on Cathedral High School, which is um, uh, it's a, a private school on on the northeast side of uh, of Indianapolis, and was originally actually a uh, an archdiocesan school it was located right downtown. And then uh, you know demographics change in the city and they decided that uh they were going to shut the school down and some uh brothers uh some from brothers from holy cross uh you know came down from northern indiana you know kind of saved the school uh you know mm. kept it open moved it to a different location um but ultimately uh you know their their connection there with notre dame they uh they, they were going to be the fighting irish so wow. um, they kept the uh kept the school open kept it going and uh i was able to continue with my uh your Catholic education there through high school. Wow, wow. Well, sports-wise, you played a wide variety of sports as a student athlete. Share with the audience how you gained a perspective on an appreciation for coaching as a result. Yeah, I mean, if you look through, um, you know, th- throughout my life, I, you know, I, I wasn't always going to be, um, you know, the the absolute best athlete. I was somebody who had a lot of interests. I was involved in a lot of different, uh, a lot of different things. Um, you know, I played football. I, uh, I played basketball. I wrestled. I, um, I played baseball. Probably the one that I was the best at was actually ice hockey. So, so I was involved in a lot of different things. Um, and there were going to be certain ones where I was talented and there were going to be other ones where you know what maybe i wasn't the best um i went to a a a high school that um i was going to be surrounded by a lot of really really good athletes so Mm -hmm. um it was going to be difficult to uh to to be somebody that got on the field a lot um and and i kind of attribute me putting so much emphasis and so much effort into my coaching career i kind of go back to um, that time that I did spend where I wasn't going to be the, the guy who was the starter. I wasn't going to be the guy who was playing uh, a lot. I was on the, on the sidelines around a lot of really, 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 uh, great, great coaches, not just in terms of X's and O's and what they did on the field, but just the type of people that they are and mm-hmm. the, uh, and the, 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 the examples that they set okay. for, for a lot of the, the, the guys around them. So when I looked at it, I look back and I see that, you know what, I had a lot of really good examples. Um, and I think I learned an awful lot um, about, about perseverance um, through, through having to go through that. So that when I did come time for me to, 
to want to be a coach myself, um, I, I just had a little bit of perspective of, you know what, you're going to have to work hard at it. Yeah. Um, because it wasn't wasn't so easy and kind of just handed to me, I had to work hard for it. I think that really kind of kind of made me a better coach in the long run. Yeah, it's interesting perspective. Speaking of coaching, by the way, talk about your coaching mentor and his influence. Yeah, I'd really say that there were uh, there, there were two. There was one that really kind of got me into it. A guy by the name of Eddie Brown. Um, who uh, was my uh, little league coach in baseball. And I got to a point where I couldn't do it anymore, um, it, just age-wise. And he suggested to me that, hey, why don't, why don't you come and help us uh, help us coach, coach the team next year? Um, that was really kind of my introduction to it. But I think I really, I really kind of took off as a coach. And, and who I am today is really because of um, a gentleman by the name of Bruce Cyphers. Um, Bruce Cyphers was the... Um, was the coach at uh, Ron Colley for for uh, you know twenty some years, um, and and I really kind of I, I guess I really kind of matured uh, as a coach under his uh, under his uh, tutelage or teaching, you might say. Um, he was um, a, a gentleman who, don't get me wrong, the X's and O's and winning and all that stuff was really really important. Sure, uh, but he ultimately. Um, made it very, very easily known that um, yes, we had a we had a responsibility to make the, the the gentlemen that we were working with, the young men, the absolute best football players we could. But at the same time, it was so much more than that. It was so much bigger than that. You had um, you know, at some point they're going to be members of the community. We need to do our part to make them the best members of the community they can be. At some point, a lot of them are probably going to be husbands. It's our job to help make them into the best husbands they can possibly be. At some point, they might be fathers. It's our job to make us, make them the best fathers that they can possibly be. And ultimately, his his overarching goal for everything, uh, the way he sees it is we have a responsibility as Christians, as specifically Catholics, but Christians in general, um, that our job is to try and bring – as many people to Jesus Christ as we possibly can. Mm. get as many of these young men that we come into contact with to heaven as possible. He was a big believer in, Hey, I want to do everything I possibly can to get myself to heaven. And oh, by the way, while I'm doing it, I want to bring as many people with me as I possibly can. Fantastic. And that's exactly why, um, you know, we, in 2016, we had an undefeated season. And that wound up being his last season, not because of the undefeated season and the state championship, but because he had the opportunity to take over the Catholic youth organization here in Indianapolis. And the way he sees it, man, it, 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 a football program like it impacts, you know, 90 players, 100 players. As CYO, I can do that for thousands every year yeah. and do the exact same thing for thousands of kids every year. But he didn't step back because he lost the passion for it. He stepped back because he understood this is my goal in life. This is what I'm meant to do is to try and bring as many people to God as I can. Well, and let's not overlook the fact that he influenced you. So, yes, he certainly had an impression on a great number of student athletes over the years, but he influenced you. And so now you're carrying on what you learned from him and you're passing that on to all the student athletes that you come into contact with. And while we're talking about the faith side of this and not so much the football side, sometimes on this show we get to hear about players, about teams getting to celebrate mass together, or at least the Catholics who want to attend. I'm sure that with Roncalli being a Catholic high school, there must be some opportunity like this with your team. Yeah, um, and uh, you know, something that was really kind of odd to me was um, when I first started working there, even with somebody like uh, Bruce, who, uh, by the way, I, I should have probably mentioned this, he also uh, was a convert to Catholicism. Uh, wow. Uh, kind of an interesting little uh, little tidbit there. Um, but when I got there, um, I was kind of shocked to see that, uh, you know, a pregame mass was not a part of the standard procedure. When I was at uh, you know, Cathedral, that was just something you did. That was a part of how it all worked out. Um, and after I kind of established myself, I brought it up to Bruce and I said, hey, this this seems like it really should be a part of what we do. And he said, hey, you know what? That, that's a great idea. Why don't you figure out how to make that work? 
he was he was one of those that um, you know it, it, it's great to have great ideas, but you better be better be willing to you know figure out how to implement it. So that became kind of my quest is to figure out okay how can we fit this into the schedule uh, of what we did, and ultimately I printed and presented him with okay here's how we can make this work. Um, and and ever since then we have we've been uh, you know having a pregame mass. Um, Every single week, uh, whether we are uh, at home or on the road, mm. um, you know, this year in particular, we had um, you know, a couple of games that had uh, you know quite a bit of travel involved. Um, you know, just finding ways to make sure that we get that in and make sure that that is a big part of what we do um, has become part of um, you know just just part of my job, part of part of what I believe is is really really important about uh, what we do, and as a part of that. Um, we also include a program I call, we call Senior Scripture. I um, mean, this was actually around before I was there, but we've kind of streamlined it and maybe made it a little bit more efficient over the years. Mm-hmm. Is that you know we at the beginning of the year kind of set out, okay, here's all of our games, um, and we uh, have a, a different senior each week. Um, we'll give sort of a, a reflection. We give them kind of a format to follow, and we um, we hook uh, hook them up with. Um, there's some people in our theology department here around Holly to kind of help guide them. Hmm. Um, but the idea is to find a, find a, a scripture passage and kind of tie it into that week's game um, and try to draw parallels between what the word of God is with uh, what it is that we're trying to do uh, each week with these young men. Wonderful. Wonderful. I like it. I like it. And I've still got a lot more to talk with Chris about, but I do always challenge myself to remember that even 149 episodes in, there is still always the chance for people to just be coming to Catholic Sports Radio for the first time. And I do very much appreciate that. I encourage you, if you're new, go back and listen to lots of other guests who have been on the show in the more than two and a half years now since I first launched Catholic Sports Radio. My continued thanks, of course, for those of you who continue to listen regularly. But so, yes, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, as I talked about Merchant Side Marketing Group, I really don't get any income from doing Catholic Sports Radio is a ministry for me. Although with that comes the challenges of not only doing all the work on and off the air surrounding the show, but costs that come with operating Catholic Sports Radio. I've detailed a lot of those expenses over a number of episodes of this show, but the bottom line is I am challenged to have to try to cover those costs out of my own pocket. Although I have been blessed to have listeners and guests make financial contributions to Catholic Sports Radio, the payables have definitely outweighed the receivables, unfortunately, meaning that there's definitely a financial shortfall. Sadly, my pockets are not deep at all. I do hope you find value, though, in all that I do and that this show has made an impact on your faith life and, as a result, is something you would like to support with a one-time contribution. On the website, there is a Donate to CSR button that makes it fast and easy for you to contribute securely online in any amount you wish. There's no drop-down menu of amounts to choose from. You put in whatever you're comfortable with. Do please prayerfully consider what you can do for this ministry in terms of financial support to help me offset the various costs that I otherwise have to find a way to take on on my own. Instead of doing it online, electronically, through the website, alternatively, as some folks have opted to do instead, you can get in touch with me through the contact section of catholicsportsradio.net to ask for the mailing address, and I will personally write you back with details on where you can send a check. I'm grateful to everyone who listens to the show and would most appreciate your considering Catholic Sports Radio as part of your tithing as I continue working to use this ministry to bring more people closer to Christ. Chris, you were sharing with us about the football team's pregame mass, but what about you personally? Is there anything that you do to bring your faith to the field with you? Absolutely. Um, I, uh, I I got this uh, idea from um, uh, another coach that I had worked with. Actually, and I was I was coaching baseball in my younger years. Um, and this particular coach, he um, I would see him I mean, when we were on the bus going to games, and, and he'd take his hat off. And, and I and I'd always kind of wondered what the heck we was going what was going on. He was taking his hat off. He was looking at it and hmm. trying to figure it out. And what had happened was. He had gotten into the habit of, you know, putting reminders and you know on the bill of his hat, and it was always some sort of a, you know, a prayer that went with it. So I ah. kind of adopted that, and I uh, used it for myself, and I, and I tried to make it, you know, uh, you know, 
foolproof by uh, making it so there's no way I can possibly mess it up. So I have uh, I have taken to doing the exact same thing. Where on the bill of my hat uh, or my visor or whatever I happen to be wearing, I have uh, just some reminders of the things that I want to make sure that I pray for each time. So as I'm going out to the field, I get about halfway halfway there. And I always, you know, remove my hat because any good Catholic before they pray, you're going to remove your hat. That's always going to happen. So I remove my hat and I look down and it always reminds me that, hey, that I need to, I need to pray. I always pray for three specific things. Um, I always go to, uh, I pray for, for wisdom, wisdom to the way I put it is a uh, wisdom to, uh, you know, lead these young men, um, lead these young men and whatever it is that we're, we happen to be doing that day. Um, the second one is for courage, okay? courage to play and coach like a, like a, like a real man should in, in the eyes of the Lord. And then finally for strength and, and the strength is to always do what is right. And I try to leave that kind of open-ended because in any given game, you never know what right's going to be. There's never a hundred percent. This is absolutely what's right. Yeah. So I always try to pray, pray for the strength to always, you know, kind of know and do and, and act upon you know, what is right, um, you know, in that moment. And then, uh, you know, afterwards, we wrap things up, I put my hat back on. And then as I'm stepping onto the field, I always do the sign of the cross because you do that at the beginning of the mass to kind of open things up. The minute I step on the field, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in that, in that mindset. And then as I'm leaving the field, I do the exact same thing the sign of the cross kind of ending ending that um that 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 witness to uh the me using all the all the gifts that the lord has blessed me with um it's a way for me to kind of kind of end that that prayer so to speak and then on the way back into the locker room i do the exact same thing but rather than praying for those things i am i'm thanking god mm. uh, god god for allowing uh you know those things to come through me fantastic fantastic i love it i love it I wonder then, as the special teams coordinator, you get the opportunity to have a smaller, more intimate audience, if you will, in front of you in terms of just certain players, as opposed to, for example, the head coach addressing the entire team. Do you find that environment more conducive to talking one-on-one or, say, to maybe just two or three student-athletes about the role of the Catholic faith in their life? Yeah, I, I certainly think anytime you do things, um, you know, one on one or in a, in a small group setting, it's a little bit easier to open up. Um, and I and I, I find that in my in my role as a teacher as well. Um, it's when you when you can do things one on one, you just tend to get on a little more personal level sometimes um, than than opening things up. But I will say that um, at, at Ron Colley from the very beginning, um, it's been the kind of place where that, that, that discussion of, you know, Catholic faith, that discussion of, you know, our relationship with Jesus Christ, that role that he plays in our lives, it's always been something that's been kind of front and center. So at the end of each practice, we pray as a group. Mm. Um, at the, at the end of each game, we pray as a group before each game, we pray as a group. Um, so I think that, you know, even though, yeah, you're absolutely right. Doing things on a more personal level is, is more conducive to those smaller groups. Um, I, I think we've really kind of strived to make it more of a, more of a group dynamic, more of a, Hey, this is what we're about. Wonderful. Wonderful. I wonder since your school is based in a city where there's an NFL team, I'm sure the players on your team must be glued to every Colts game. Do you and the coaching staff help the Ron Colley football players understand the difference between setting goals and aspiring to more with their football pursuits versus idolizing and glorifying the Colts players? Yeah, I think um, we're, we're, we're always going to be um, we're always going to be one, uh, a group of people that are always going to want to set goals. Goals are going to definitely be, be a part of. Um, you know, just how we live our lives. Um, if you're not setting goals for yourself, you're just kind of aimlessly wandering. And then, you know, the idolizing, I, I feel like that's, that's when some of that comes in because you're kind of, kind of aimless in how you're going about, uh, going about your life. So goal setting is always going to be something that we're going to, we're going to do with them. Um, we've always been the kind of place where, you know, when it comes to the football side of things, Hey, you know what, you make a big play. Hey, you know what, Get, 
get excited and, and and be happy be happy with your teammates but 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 we're not gonna we're not gonna do some of the things you see on sunday we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna do the showboat things we're nice. not gonna try to you know, you know show show other people up hey you go score a touchdown in the ball to the referee and go 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 be happy with your buddies nice. uh but but we're, we try to try to you know, specifically you make sure that, you know what, that's just not going to be a part of our culture and who we are. Yeah, and for those who are new to Catholic Sports Radio and you've not heard enough of my body of work to understand where that question came from, one of the pillars of this ministry is that sports are wonderful and there are so many tremendous benefits from participating in sports. However, we must put it in perspective that we worship God and God alone. We don't worship sport. Uh, Chris, we've talked a lot about the kids who are the student athletes at Roncalli, but what about your own family? <laughs> Share with the audience about your wife and your kids. Yeah, so uh, you know, like I uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, I am uh, I am uh, married. Been uh, I, I I think this was kind of her that uh, we got married in the year two thousand. So I know exactly how many years <laughs> we've been married. I can never get. I can never get stumped on that question. <laughs> my wonderful wife, uh, my wonderful wife, Lynn, um, she, uh, we, we're members of uh, St. Jude Parish here in Indianapolis. And, um, you know, I've certainly, you know, done, uh, done, done, you know, my fair share of, you know, organizing the masses, the pregame uh, masses and things like that. I also serve, uh, serve the parish as a, a lector and a, and a Eucharistic minister. Um, you know, my wife um, has been involved in the choir um, she's also currently serving as the PTO treasurer. Um, we are we we always have a, a summer festival that we're always volunteering for that. Um, so we try to be as active as we possibly can in the parish itself. Um, and as a part of that, my uh, my two children. I've got a I've got a son who is a junior um, by the name of Austin, um, and a daughter who's a fifth grader um, at St. Jude who, uh, by the name of Addison. Austin, by the way, does go to Rock Valley as well. And um, um, we've tried to get them involved in uh, in being active. I've kind of always told them that, you know what? Hey, we're going to go to mass. We're going to go to church. If we're going to be there, why not be involved? Why not do your part? Why not? Why not? Uh, you know, be be play an active role, I guess, mm-hmm. um, in in how the mass is going to play out. So, so my son Austin has been a um, he's been a, a server for quite some time, and now that he's in uh, high school, they've introduced. Um, this role of master of ceremonies, um, where they're they're a little bit more active in uh, you know assisting the priest with uh, you know, some of the other uh, other duties. Mm. Um, and my son, my daughter Addison, she just uh, she just this year uh, started being a server, but she's been in the choir and things like that as well. So we try to try to instill a little bit more of an uh, um, you know being an active participant in the mass and not just uh, not just uh, you know being a being a passive spectator i guess sure sure well before we wrap up i'd love to hear about the pilgrimage that you and your wife went on a few years ago if you could share that with this with the audience so this pilgrimage all came about because um we're we're, we're known as ron Colley high school and ron Colley high school most people don't know ron Colley. ron Colley doesn't mean much to most people but uh, ron Colley is actually the uh the the um, original name of uh, St. John the 23rd. Uh, Angelo Giuseppe Roncalli um, you know, served as Pope and became Pope John the 23rd. Now he's St. John the 23rd. So our uh, uh, he's now our president. He was our principal at the time. Really, really, really big on um, the, the, the life of um, you know, Pope Roncalli, the mm. The, uh, the 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 ministry that he had throughout his life, mm-hmm. um, so he was just kind of a history buff, was really into learning about this pope. So he actually went and did a pilgrimage of his own, where he followed in the footsteps of John the Twenty Third. Mm. And after he got so fired up about it, he presented it to our board, to our president, and they decided, hey, this is something that we think all of our teachers should have the opportunity to do. So um, we wound up being selected to uh, to take part in it. So over spring break, we go. Uh, we we went to Italy, and we went to different locations where um, that would have been important to uh, John the John the twenty third. Okay. We um, they used to go to uh, Venice 
um, which was a place where he was, uh, he was an archbishop, but uh, we go to Milan, which is right near um, where he was originally from, which was uh, Soto El Monte. And it's right at the foot of the, uh, of the Alps. And he served in a, a, a bigger town real uh, close to that called Bergamo. So we spent a few days there going to places like his childhood home and, um, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the seminary that bears his name now. We spent a few days there, and then we went down to uh, Assisi and visited the St. Francis would have been. Those were uh, real popular areas for him to go and, um, you know, just kind of be with the Lord and just kind of, um, you know, uh, be alone with his thoughts and meditate and things like that. Um, and then ultimately, uh, you know, wound up in Rome. And once again, you know, we were touring all the, all the big basilicas, the cathedrals, all the places that were you know, important to his, uh, his life and his ministry. Um, and, and man, it was just, just an absolutely incredible trip. And it's, it, it's really kind of interesting that you would think that with as many times as they've gone there, that they, they would have figured out everything by now, but it seems like every single year there's something new that's added there's something mm. new they learn yeah. about him there's something new that oh hey we didn't know that this place was even there um and they just keep adding more and new and interesting things to it where we get to learn a little bit about the, the namesake of uh of the school that we have uh we've all just kind of the, the people that go on this trip are people that have really really fallen in love with this place and you can people tell us all the time that there's just something different um, about walking into that building, the people that are there, the, the, the attitude, the, 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 the culture. And I think a lot of that comes from just the, the, the love that people have for each other around there and the love that we have for, uh, for, for our namesake and, the, and, and what he's provided to us. And this was 2017 that you and your wife were there. Yes. And, uh, and, and, <laughs> While we were there, we got to do, have a, a mass at one of the side chapels at uh, St. Peter's Basilica. And it just so happened that um, the, the priest, let's say the mass, was a Ron Colley grad. Mm. Um, so we, we had uh, you know mass there, and I had prearranged that uh, my wife and I we, uh, did our vows uh, there at St. Peter's Basilica in, uh, in the Vatican. So that, I, 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 I don't know that there's a whole lot of, uh, you know, you're not going to get much better, uh, I don't think, than that one. Indeed, indeed. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Wow. Wow. All good stuff, Chris. And I really appreciate you coming on Catholic Sports Radio. God bless you and your family and all that you're doing to serve the Roncalli community as well. Happy to do it. I'm humbled, uh, humbled to be a part of it. And, uh, you know, man, it's just, uh, it's just, uh, it, it's, it's incredible the, the, the work that you're doing to, uh, to bring this message. We, we definitely thank you for uh, everything that you do. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And listeners, I thought it would be fitting since we have a coach on the line if we close with a prayer this week from the National Catholic Coaches Association. And we'll do it together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Proverbs 10, the one who lives with integrity lives securely, but whoever perverts his ways will be found out. Lord, in a world where integrity seems to be forgotten, help me see those times when I put my own at risk. Give me the strength to ask for help and even more strength to listen. Lord, use my life as an example of integrity so that it may be passed on to another generation and to the athletes whom you have entrusted to me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. This is Catholic Sports Radio. Find more at catholicsportsradio.net, as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It is at Cath Sports Radio on all those. C-A-T-H, at Cath Sports Radio. I'm Bruce Wozniak, and remember, it's not whether you win or lose, it's that it's Jesus that you always choose. 